Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So this is the section, uh, the session number three. Uh, we are uh, almost at the end of this week number four. I, I mean, week number three is not four already, but we are almost at the end of the. Um, we are almost at the end of the course, so we are uh, uh, going to end with the topics that we have for this section number four of the platform. Um, we are going to end with also the knowledge check that we have on the platform this week. Tomorrow is the last day of this week, so we are going to continue with the knowledge check that we have on the platform. Um, because uh, you know that uh, on Friday you are going to like um, you're going to have the check-in of the activities that you are performing on the platform. Así que vamos a terminar con las actividades de la plataforma. Eh, vamos a tratar de terminar todo mañana, ya que ustedes tienen para el día viernes su revisión de lo que es, ¿verdad? El trabajo que han hecho ustedes en la plataforma. <coughs> Así que vamos a tratar de eh, trabajar en esa parte. Eh, we were talking about the, the physical appearance of the people. We were like uh, talking about uh, the different adjectives that we can uh, have um, in this topic. We have different activities in which we are like uh, making some uh, exercises related to the uh, the description of the people. We were like playing yesterday a game, a, a game in which you were like. Uh, guessing what is the person that your partner has. It was kind of a funny, it was uh, kind of interesting. And I was telling you that we are going to do that activity today. Um, I think we're going to have it like a couple of minutes, but I'm not going to do it at the beginning. We're going to do it at the end again. Vamos a tratar de hacer la actividad al final, cuando ya estemos la mayoría, porque vamos a tratar eh, de avanzar un poco con la información que tenemos también en la plataforma, ya que el día de mañana pues tenemos que terminar la información que tenemos ahí. Así que vamos a tratar de hacer el juego para la parte final, ¿verdad? De la, de la sesión. Estamos hablando de physical appearance. Estamos hablando de eh, how to express our ideas about the people, um, how can we express that physical appearance or the things that we see uh, through our, uh, our eyes when we are looking uh, for someone. We have different words that we can use to express that ideas. That in this case are the adjectives that are the relevant uh, information that we have. So we're going to listen a conversation and uh, which we're going to apply that knowledge to make a conversation to produce uh, the language with someone while you are expressing your ideas about the people. And the conversation is called, she is very tall. Ella es muy alta. Y vamos a aplicar, ¿verdad? La información sobre los adjetivos y cómo hablar de las personas nosotros eh, a través de los adjetivos. Así que vamos a irnos un momento a la plataforma and we are going to listen that conversation. So let's pay attention. Hello to all. In this lesson, you will listen to a conversation between two people describing another person. Adjectives of appearance will be practiced. 
I hear you have a new girlfriend, Randy. Yes. Her name's Ashley, and she's gorgeous. Really? What does she look like? Well, she's very tall. How tall? About six feet two, I suppose. Wow, that is tall. What color is her hair? She has beautiful red hair. And how old is she? I don't know. She won't tell me. Okay, let's check the, uh, um, the things that we have here. Vamos a chequear un poco la información que aparece en esta uh, conversación bastante corta, ¿verdad? Let's see. I hear you have a new girlfriend, Randy. In another person. Adjectives of appearance will be practiced. I hear you have a new girlfriend, Randy. Yes. Her name's Ashley, and she's gorgeous. Really? What does she look like? Well, she's very tall. How tall? About six feet two, I suppose. Wow, that is tall. What color is her hair? She has beautiful red hair. And how old is she? I don't know. She won't tell me. Very tall. Okay, in, in this conversation, we have like very specific uh, details about the girlfriend, uh, the Reddit's girlfriend. Uh, they are talking about that he uh, has a new girlfriend. And the girl, Emily, said, I hear you have a new girlfriend, Randy. Yes, her name is Ashley and she's gorgeous. In this case, we're using a gorgeous to express that she is like uh, very beautiful, um, pretty, all of the words uh, in, in one uh, specific word. Billy, what does she look like? What does she look like? Como luce ella? Well, she's very tall. She's very tall. It's muy alta. How tall? About six feet two, I suppose. Él no está muy seguro si podemos ver eh, la forma en la que él se expresa. No está muy seguro de, de qué tan alta es. Él dice que es muy, um, podemos decir, increíble, eh, bonita, pero no nos está hablando exactamente de cómo luce, sino más que todo nos está diciendo algo bastante general. Um, wow, that is tall. What color is her hair? ¿De qué color es su cabello? Uh, she has a beautiful red hair. Ella tiene el cabello rojo. And how old is she? ¿Qué edad tiene, verdad? La edad que tiene la chica. I don't know. She won't tell me. That is kind of weird that someone said something like this. I don't know because she is not telling me. Uh, how old is she? No sabe, es su novia, pero él no sabe cuántos años tiene. But in this case, we can apply this information to make this kind of conversation with people that we um, maybe we know or something like that. We can express ideas about the people that we are like um, describing. In this case, when we are making something like this, we can uh, give more details about the people that we are like expressing. In this case, uh, imagine that uh, you are talking with someone about your favorite person. And in this case, it is not related to artists, uh, to singers, to actor or actress. In this case, it's your favorite person in this moment. It could be your mom, it could be your dad, it could be your husband, your uh, wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Whatever person is your favorite person. And if someone said, oh, um, I hear that you have a new girlfriend or new boyfriend, like in the conversation. And you're going to say, oh, yes, I have a new, in my, in my case, I have a new boyfriend. Um, his name is, and I can say the name of the person that I am with in this moment. And I'm going to describe that person. So in that case, I can uh, give more details about the physical appearance of that person. Because I think um, in that moment, it is very important for us that people make uh, an image of the person uh, that I am describing. For me, it's very important that um, people can imagine how my boyfriend looks like. So I can say, uh, he is medium height, 
uh, he is slim, he has long, uh, straight long hair, um, she has uh, brown eyes, uh, he has a bright smile. Um, it seems to be kind of serious, but he is very funny. Uh, he is smart. It, whatever element that I want to add to the description of the person. Yo puedo eh, utilizar todas las descripciones que yo necesito para hablar de la persona con la que yo estoy saliendo en este momento. Como les decía, eh, nosotros podemos describir a nuestra persona favorita, pero eh, puede ser nuestros padres, pueden ser nuestros hermanos, pueden ser nuestras parejas, whatever person it is, pero tenemos que dar detalles. Well, in my case, I prefer giving details. Yo prefiero dar detalles en el caso de que ustedes hagan una descripción y no les guste dar muchos detalles, that's okay. Pero a mí sí me gusta dar como eh, ciertos detalles para que puedan hacerse como una imagen mental de cómo luce my favorite person. In this case, my favorite person, I am describing my boyfriend, so that's uh, very accurate. Um, so, uh, we have this conversation, but also we are going to learn something else. In this case, we are going to learn um, something about describing people. And in this case, it's related for uh, the, all the things that we were doing in the past days. Todo esto tiene que ver, ¿verdad?, con lo que hemos estado trabajando, tanto con los adjetivos como la forma en la que describimos a las personas. In this case, we are going to learn um, some questions that we can make to... Um, Seek for information. Aquí son preguntas que podemos utilizar para eh, recabar información acerca de las personas que queremos describir. So, let's pay attention to the question. We have some questions on the group because I sent to you some examples of the questions that you can ask when we were playing. So, you can make like a comparison between the questions that we have on the group and the question that we have here. Podemos hacer un pequeño análisis de las preguntas que tenemos en el grupo, así como las preguntas que tenemos acá, ¿verdad? Para encontrar la información relacionada con las personas y con la apariencia física de esas personas. Hi, in this lesson you will learn how to describe, ask and answer questions about appearance. Let's go over the audio program. Notice the questions they use to ask for the information needed. Describing people. General appearance. What does she look like? She's tall with red hair. She's gorgeous. Does he wear glasses? Yes, and he has a beard. Age. How old is she? She's about 32. She's in her 30s. How old is he? He's in his 20s. Height. How tall is she? She's 1 meter 88. She's 6 feet 2. How tall is he? He's quite short. Hair. How long is her hair? It's medium length. What color is his hair? It's dark brown. It's light brown. He has brown hair. When you want to know how someone is physically, we use what look like. For age-related questions, we use how old. For height, we use how tall. The rest of the question will depend on who you're talking about. He's in his 20s. Okay, in this case, we can see here that we um, have like four different categories. Tenemos como cuatro categorías diferentes en las que podemos um, make some different questions. In this case, we have the general appearance. We have the age. We have the height. We have the, the hair. Um, these are like clues uh, about uh, the different... Uh, information that we can ask about a person. Uh, in this case, it's when you are like uh, wanting to make a general idea about how does this person look like. 
So, in the general appearance, we have, what does she look like? Es como uh, hacer la pregunta y que esa persona pueda darnos todas las descripciones eh, posibles sobre esa persona. What does she look like? ¿Cómo luce ella? She's tall with her red hair and she is gorgeous. Es alta con el cabello rojo y es bonita, ¿verdad? Muy eh, eh, bonita, preciosa. Uh, we can uh, use different words. Does, uh, does he wear glasses? Uh, usa lentes. But in this case, we are talking about a man. Yes, and he has a bird. Sí, él usa lentes y también tiene una barba. How old is she? ¿Qué, eh, ¿qué edad tiene ella? She is about, about 32. Ella es eh, aproximadamente tiene 32. She is in her uh, 30s. Está en sus 30, ¿verdad? How old is she? He is in his 20s. Él está en sus 20. Podemos utilizar también esas expresiones. And height, in this case, is how tall is she? ¿Qué tan alta es? In this case, we have two different uh, uh, ways to uh, talk about uh, the uh, height. In this case, is 1 meter 88 uh, centimeters. Or we can say she is 6 feet 2. Aquí, en este caso, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando de las dos medidas. Una es en metros, la otra es en pies. En este caso, nosotros en El Salvador... Básicamente utilizamos los metros para, eh, para medir. But in the U.S., they use feet. How tall is he? He's quite short. Es algo pequeño. And the last one, it's talking about the hair. How long is her hair? ¿Qué tan largo tiene el cabello? It's medium length. Está como corto, ¿verdad? No tan largo. Y what color is his hair? ¿De qué color es su cabello? It's dark like brown and has a uh, brown hair. Aquí vamos a meter los colores, ¿verdad? ¿Y ¿Qué representan el cabello de cada una de las personas que nosotros estamos describiendo? So, in this case, we have two different uh, videos in which we have elements related to the uh, physical appearance of the people. Now, we are going to complete the first knowledge check. That is the knowledge check 4.6, es el 4.6, in which we are going to write questions to match these statements. Vamos a escribir preguntas que tengan que ver o que correspondan a cada una de las respuestas. So in this case, we have seven different questions. Tenemos siete preguntas, and we have the answers. My brother is 26 years old. I am a, a 1 meter 73 centimeters. He is tall and very good looking. My sister hair is medium length. I am 40 years old. They are nice, beautiful, and very tall. And he is 1 meter 80 centímetros. Ahí están nuestras respuestas. Lo que necesitamos hacer es ponerle una pregunta a esas respuestas. So, in this case, I'm going to give you five minutes to think about the questions. Cinco minutos para pensar en nuestra respuesta. Then, uh, when the time is over, you are going to tell me the questions and we are going to write the questions on the platform and also we are going to check if the questions are correct. So in this case, it's a 19, yes, and uh, a 25, 26, a las 8, 26 aproximadamente, vamos a dar nuestra respuesta. So think about the questions and you are going to tell me what are the best uh, option in this case.
pues sí, ya las tienen creadas.
Okay, I have a lot of uh, answers on the chat, so we are going to read uh, the question that you have there. Tenemos varias preguntas ya escritas en el chat, así que vamos a ver eh, de qué trata. Let's see with the first one. We have two different answers uh, for the number one. How old is he and how old is your brother? In this case, we have again, how old is your brother? Um, yes, how old mm -hmm. is your brother? We have it twice. How old is he or how old is your brother? How old is your brother? Okay, how old? I think so. Is your brother? Okay. Then we have in the second one. How tall are you? Yes. Of course, of course. How tall oh, are you? you? Okay, how tall are you? Number three, it's an... Let me check. What does he look like? What does he look like? What does he look like? Okay. Where is how, teacher? How? I think how, so. How does he look like? Oh, we have another one that said, how does he look like? Hmm. We're going to try first with what. Vamos a poner primero what, porque ya hay varios que pusieron what so does. What? Okay. What does he look like? Okay. What does he what look does like? He How yes. does? No, what, what ah, does okay. he look like? Okay. Yes. What does he look like? Vamos a ponerle what he does. Looks, he looks like. Looks with S. Mm, okay. Number four, it's said, uh, let me see. Number four, number four. How long is your sister's hair, said someone here? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. How long? Oh, how long is your sister's hair? Okay. And number five, let me see if I find a question. How old are you? How, yes. Okay. How old are you? <clears throat> Number six. What do they look like? What do they look like? Right. What do they like this? What are they like? Okay, what are they like? What do they look like? What else? What do they look like? What do they look like? Uh, I, okay. I think so. Okay, we're going to see. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Okay. And number seven, how tall is he? How, how tall, tall is, is he? Okay. Yeah. How, how is tall he? Is... How tall is he? Okay. How tall is he? Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Okay. Hay alguna que está mala. Vamos a ver. Tiene que ver una mala aquí. What does he look like? What does he look like? It is not the correct one. There is how to show, not, not what. Not what, okay. How does? How does he look like? Teacher, I... Tell me. Tell me, Vivian. Uh, uh, in my case, mm -hmm. I, what does he look like? Ah, without the S. 
with yes. what? Okay. What does he look like? Let's see. Correct. That is the thing here. Without S. Excellent. In this case, uh, we cannot use the S in this in this verb because we are using the auxiliary. And if you are using the auxiliary, that in this case is does, you are not going to apply the rule of the third person singular. Si ya tenemos nuestro auxiliar que ya hace la función de tercera persona, ¿verdad? De las reglas de la tercera persona, ya no es necesario que nuestro verbo lleve la S. Very good. Excellent. So, in this case, we have the first knowledge check in which we have in the number one, how old is your brother? Number two, how tall are you? Number three, what does he look like? Number four, how long is your sister's hair? Number five, how old are you? Number six, what do they look like? And number seven, how tall is he? Now, we are going to see the second uh, knowledge check. In this case, we are going to listen an audio program. In this case, it's a listening exercise because you know that uh, when you are learning uh, English and even a uh, different language, you need to, to practice not just the writing part, but you need to, to uh, practice the listening part. That is one of the... We can say most complicated thing because um, in some cases we uh, have different forms of pronunciation of the words. And if you can listen carefully, uh, the people that speak English in El Salvador, uh, people that is speaking English in the US, people that is talking in English in the UK, people that is talking in English in Australia, in Thailand, in Japan are different. We have different pronunciations, but in this case, when we're uh, talking in English in El Salvador, we are like uh, focusing on the rules of the pronunciation. But if you go to the US, they are not like applying those rules. So what is the, uh, why is that different from El Salvador and the US? Uh, it's kind of different because we're learning uh, through rules, how to produce the language. And we are not like very familiar with the use of the language in the US. In that case, in the US is like, um, we can say if the people can understand something about the things that you are saying, you are okay. And that's fine. That is not a big deal to uh, apply the rules to the words that you are using. But here in El Salvador, we need to follow some rules because we feel better and we feel familiar with those rules. So in this case, we're going to put into practice the macro skills of the listening part. Vamos a poner en práctica nuestro listening, ¿verdad? Vamos a escuchar para obtener información. Vamos a escuchar el audio dos veces porque tenemos eh, algunos ejercicios por acá que vamos a completar. En este caso son eh, cinco, pero cada uno tiene dos eh, partes diferentes. Así que vamos a escuchar el audio dos veces y luego vamos a contestar las preguntas. So, let's uh, listen twice the audio and then we are going to answer the exercise. So, let's pay attention. Page 60, exercise four, listening. Who is it? Part A, listen to descriptions of five people. Number them from one to five. One. I think Brian's good looking. He's pretty tall with dark brown hair and a mustache. He's about 30. Two. Tina's 18. She's got red hair shoulder length and very curly and she always wears interesting glasses just for fun three rosie is pretty tall for her age she has long blonde hair and wears contact lenses she just turned 10. four tim's about 23. he's fairly short and a bit heavy 
His hair isn't very long. 5. Alice is very tall, and she's got long black hair. She's around 25. Oh, and she's very slim. She looks like a fashion model. Page 60. Exercise 4. Part B. Listen again. How old is each person? 1. I think Brian's good-looking. He's pretty tall, with dark brown hair and a mustache. He's about 30. 2. Tina's 18. She's got red hair, shoulder length, and very curly. And she always wears interesting glasses, just for fun. 3. Rosie is pretty tall for her age. She has long blonde hair and wears contact lenses. She just turned 10. 4. Tim's about 23. He's fairly short and a bit heavy. His hair isn't very long. 5. Alice is very tall, and she's got long black hair. She's around 25. Oh, and she's very slim. She looks like a fashion model. Okay, let's listen one by one. So we are going to listen just the number one and we are going to answer then the number two and that's the way we are going to listen at this part. Page 60, exercise four, listening. Who is it? Part A. Listen to descriptions of five people. Number them from one to five. One. I think Brian's good looking. He's pretty tall with dark brown hair and a mustache. He's about 30. Okay, we have the number one and it says, I think Brian's what? What is Brian? Good looking. Ah. Good looking. Good looking. Good looking without the hyphen or with hyphen. Se le pone el hyphen es la, la línea que se le pone. Le pongo el guión o no le pongo el guión a good looking. No. 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 no? Good okay. Sure. Good looking. Very good. Yeah. He is. ¿Qué es él? Really tall. Pretty tall. Pretty tall like this? Yes. Yes, okay. Very good. Let's see number two. I mean, let's hear number two. Two. Tina's 18. She's got red hair, shoulder length, and very curly. And she always wears interesting glasses, just for fun. Okay, we have number two. He has dark brown hair and oh my god, what is this? Ah, we have three from Brian. I am I like was scared. Nice. Oh my god. Uh nice he has a mustache. a mustache. Mustache. Okay. And you are not saying anything about the number three. Oh my god. Okay. A lady with a mustache impossible. <laughs> um it is not like impossible, but it's not like uh, not ever, very, not ever uh, acceptable. Okay, now number two, Tina's eighteen. She's got what? Red hair. Red hair. Okay. Curly hair. Curly hair or red hair. Red, red hair. Red hair. Both. Or both. Um. Maybe, yeah. Red hair. Mm, let's see. Red hair. Red hair. And it says then, uh, in the second part, she has shoulder length hair and very... Curly. Ah, very curly. So in this case, we're going to write curly. And she always wears interesting glasses just for fun. Okay. Let's see number three. I mean, let's hear number three.
Let's wait. It is not sounding. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes. It's like that. It's tired. That's why he's like this. Mm, 37. Let's see. Kind of. Nah, 26. Tina's 18. She's got red hair, shoulder length, and very curly. And she always wears interesting glasses just for fun. Number three. Three. Rosie is pretty tall for her age. She has long blonde hair and wears contact lenses. She just turned 10. Four. Okay, number three. Rosie is for her age. Pretty tall, say someone. Very tall. Okay, pretty tall for her age. She yes. has and wears contact lenses. She just turned 10. She has? Long, long blonde hair. Okay, long, brown. Brown or blonde? Blonde. Ah, blonde. blonde hair. And blonde, blonde hair. Okay. Yeah. Okay, number four. Let's see number four. Fairly short. Mm. Tim's about 23. He's fairly short and a bit heavy. His hair isn't very long. Five. Okay. It says, Tim's about 23. He is? Fairly short. Fairly short. And a bit. His hair isn't very long. And a bit heavy. Okay, heavy. Okay, we're going to see number five. Alice is very tall, and she's got long black hair. She's around 25. Oh, and she's very slim. She looks like a fashion model. Okay, Alice is... And she's got long black hair. What is Alice? Very tall. Oh. Okay. Tall, very tall. Very, very tall. tall. And she is around 25. Oh, and she's very, she looks like a fashion mm -hmm. model. Very slim. Very slim. Very slim. Very slim. Okay, it's slim. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Oh, very good. Very good. Excellent. Aquí tenemos la respuesta, ¿verdad? Para nuestro segundo knowledge check. So, in the first one, good looking. Number two, we can say pretty tall. And number three, mustache. In the second one, we have in the first part, red hair in the second one carly and the number three we have in the first part pretty tall in the second part long blonde hair in number four we have a fairly short and heavy and in the number five we have very tall and is slim okay very good excellent and thank you for your participation muy bien Vamos a dejar esta parte hasta acá. Vamos a iniciar con un nuevo eh, tema. En este caso tiene que ver con una parte, um, we can say a, bit, a little bit grammatical. Es un, un tema un poco más gramatical. We are going to leave the games for a moment. Vamos a dejarlo eh, las partes eh, kind of funny eh, for a couple of minutes. And we are going to... Um, Talk about something kind of serious, kind of different. 
Vamos a hablar de algo un poco eh, más así como, uh, podemos llamarle kind of boring. Eh, vamos a hablar de un tema gramatical. We are going to talk about the modifiers. Eh, we are going to learn uh, how eh, or what are the modifiers. How can we use these modifiers and some um, examples of these words. Vamos a aprender qué son los, eh, los modifiers. Vamos a hablar de los modifiers. Eh, ¿Qué son? ¿Para qué se utilizan? ¿Qué palabras funcionan como modifiers in English? So, <clears throat> we're going to begin with the first part of this topic. And in this case, we are going to uh, talk about, uh, about the, the modifiers. We are going to make an introduction of the topic. So, we're going to have here the topic that is modifiers. And we are going to make an introduction of the topic. We are going to make a general idea about this information. Vamos a ver qué, eh, qué es, ¿verdad? O qué podemos encontrar nosotros con la parte de los modifiers. But give me, give me a second, just a couple of seconds. Because I have a problem here. Okay. Let's see. In this case, as the name implies, uh, these modifiers are words that modify. Especially, they are words that modify the sentence meanings. Son palabras, ¿verdad? Que así como lo dice su nombre, están modificando. De modifiers, eh, lo podemos decir que son modificadores, ¿verdad? En este caso, los modifiers están modificando lo que es el significado de la oración que estamos construyendo. So, in this case, modifiers, as their name implies, are words that modify, especially they are words that modify their sentence their sentence meanings. Teacher. Tell me. I oh, don't see it. Yes, thank you. I understand the things that you are going to say. Thank you, thank you. Caí en cuenta desde el momento que me dijo, mm, okay. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, this is the information. In this case, it's the same thing that as, why, uh, that as I was saying about the modifiers. Es lo mismo, ¿verdad? Es la misma frase. Eh, donde vemos que los modificadores son estas palabras, ¿verdad? Que nos van a modificar nuestra oración. In this case, how do you specify what somebody looks like um, with the modifiers? Uh, how do you describe a, how an action is being performed with a modifier? ¿Cómo vamos a hablar nosotros de la apariencia de alguien? Pues vamos a utilizar los modificadores, ¿verdad? Que nos van a ayudar a modificar, básicamente, así como lo dice su nombre, esas oraciones. ¿Cómo podemos describir cómo se está realizando una acción? Pues utilizando nuestros modifiers. How do you communicate where, when, or how something happened, well, with modifiers. In this case, we're going to use the modifiers for different actions, for different things that we are going to perform in English. Now, we're going to make like something kind of deep about the modifiers. What is in reality a modifier? So in this case, are words that modify their sentence meaning, that is the thing that we were saying, 
And we are going to see some examples. En este caso, ya tenemos que modifican nuestra oración. Vamos a ver unos ejemplos de esto. And we have the first example. I rode the train. That is the, uh, the uh, statement. Esa es la oración. I rode the train. But I'm going to change that same um, statement. But in this case, we're going to do something different. I rode the it list. Train into the city. So in this case, um, we have two different things. We're like using the same thing, um, but in the second one is kind of long. It has different elements. Tenemos una misma base, ¿verdad? Una misma oración, solo que en la segunda hemos agregado elementos diferentes. En la primera, yo eh, monté, yo me fui, ¿verdad? Yo me subí en un tren, en el tren. Simple como eso, ¿verdad? Yo me fui en el tren. ¿Para dónde? No lo sabemos. ¿A qué horas? Tampoco. Porque no estamos... Um, agregando todos esos elementos que pueden dar más información acerca de la hora, del lugar o algo relevante, ¿verdad? Acerca de lo que es el tren o del viaje que nosotros eh, tuvimos en el tren. Um, es básicamente... Um, Palabras extras, palabras extras que nos van a ayudar a modificar nuestra oración. Así como vemos en la primera, solo tenemos I rode the train. That's it. Yo me subí en el tren y me fui. Nada más. Pero en el caso de la segunda, tenemos eh, diferentes elementos que ahí agregamos. Ahí podemos ir viendo las diferencias, ¿verdad? En la primera, solo pusimos I rode the train. Aquí, en la segunda, I rode the earliest. Yo me subí en el tren más tem el que sale más temprano, ¿verdad? ¿Hacia dónde? Hacia la ciudad. Entonces, podemos decir, tomé el primer tren a la ciudad, que es el earliest, el más temprano, el que sale más temprano. En este caso, ya modifiqué yo mi oración. Ya no simplemente me fui en el tren sino que me fui en el primer tren, ¿hacia dónde? Pues hacia la ciudad. Ya le agregué más información. In the second sentence, is more descriptive. That is the way. It's more descriptive because of the modifier it contains. In this case, the modifier's purpose is to make sentence more descriptive or detailed. Entonces, ¿cuál es el objetivo que nosotros le podemos poner a estos modifiers? Es Así como lo dice aquí, el propósito es hacer la, la oración más descriptiva o más detallada. That's why I'm going to write this purpose here. Eh, modifier's purpose, lo vamos a poner por acá. Modifier's purpose, I mean, is to make sentences more descriptive or detail. Es básicamente, ¿verdad? Agregarle detalles extras a la oración. They can make a sentence meaning clearer, make a sentence more specific, or simply make it more engaging. Both of the examples, a sentence above, are complete sentence. Importantísimo. Las dos oraciones son oraciones completas. 
no ne, eh, en este caso, ¿verdad? Ya llenamos la información que teníamos que dar. Entonces, no hay partes, ¿verdad? No es que una es parte de una y la otra es parte de la otra. No, son oraciones completas. Y aquí, en este caso, um, the difference is that one provides additional details about the train ride and these details depending on how this sentence fits into a larger conversation and could serve as foreshadowing clarification distinction between this and other statement or means to hook the listener's attention. ¿Para qué utilizo yo estas oraciones un poco más largas con más detalles? Primero, básicamente yo puedo utilizar la primera oración and that's it. Esa es toda la información que yo quiero dar. Yo me fui en tren. Punto. No le voy a dar especificaciones, no le voy a dar explicaciones a nadie. Simplemente le estoy diciendo que me fui en el tren. But the second one is to engage, to make the conversation uh, more interesting. Es para llamar la atención de la persona que escucha. Es para capturar su atención y que eh, me escuche lo que yo estoy tratando de decirle. Es para... Eh, hacerle una, eh, para aclararle, ¿verdad?, eh, a dónde fui, a qué horas, eh, también es para hacer una distinción entre uno y otra oración, o simplemente para llamar la atención, ¿verdad?, para que el, el, la persona que escucha esté pendiente de mi conversación. So in this case, we can say like, um, they are like functioning as, um, como arreglitos, verdad, de las oraciones. In Spanish, we can say, esto sirve como colochos, verdad, como poner, ponerle colochos a las cosas. It's like uh, making them more interesting. That's why we use these uh, modifiers. Básicamente eso es lo que estamos diciendo, ¿verdad? Que estamos arreglando un tanto la oración para que sea más interesante. The second sentence contains both a modifier and a modifier phrase. Tenemos un, modif una, um, un modificador y una frase con modificador. Acuérdense que en inglés uh, we have different elements in which we use just a word or we can use a phrase that contains that element. In this case, we have both. We have a modifier and a modifier phrase. While a modifier is a single word that alters a sentence meaning, a modifier phrase is a phrase that functions as a modifier. El modificador obviamente va a dar un cambio a la oración. Pero el modifier phrase, que es como una frase un poco más larga que contiene modifiers o modificadores, va a servir completa la frase como un modificador. Es eh, similar a como el, los adjetivos, ¿verdad? Las frases con adjetivos. Eh, are phrases that function as adjectives. Noun phrases are phrases that function as nouns. And another grammatical phrases function as a specific part of a speech. En este caso es como tener dos palabras que juntas hacen una misma función. Así como el noun phrase, que son eh, dos palabras juntas que funcionan como una sola, con un solo significado. Ahora, vamos a ver algunas palabras. I think it is not possible because it is 9 p.m. Vamos a mañana a ver algunas palabras que funcionan como modifiers, pero modifiers, single modifiers, palabras singles, simples, solas, ¿verdad? Que van a funcionar como modificadores y también vamos a ver otros ejemplos. So, we are going to continue with the topic of the modifiers tomorrow in the last session of this week. So, have a really good night and see you tomorrow in the section, I mean, in the session number four of this week number Three. Good night. Good night. See you, See you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow.